a zero trust approach wants us to remove all notions of implied trust for users, for applications, and for infrastructure. We're talking about zero trust network security with Anand Oswal. He is senior vice president and general manager of Palo Alto Networks. Anand, what does zero trust security actually mean? When you were in the office, maybe depending on which office you are, in some cases, you're able to access the applications and you just go through a firewall at, at the most, right? In, in most, in, in not most, many enterprises today. But when you're home, you get authenticated, two-factor authentication, you may go through a proxy, you may have a CASB for SaaS security, and then you go to a, a cloud-based firewall. So you're having dif different notions of implied trust because you're in the office or you're at home. And that's what I mean by implied trust, right? Based on the, based on the fact that I was able to get into the office where I had a badge and I'm able to get onto the office network. I had, I had certain notion of implied trust that gave me access to certain things. And we don't have, want to have any notion of implied trust. I still remember like many years ago, 20 years ago or so, um, when, when we had guests come into the office and they would just plug the ethernet cable, if you remember those before people Wi-Fi spell when they would get access to the corporate network. That's implied trust because you're in the building and you could connect your, the ethernet port that was there in the conference room to your laptop and get access. So implied trust is you're in the building and you make the assumption that the perimeter security is all working properly and therefore anything you do within the confines of that building is safe. It's just one example around users getting access to the network, but it could be also around me accessing a certain application because I belong to a certain group or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Any notion of implied trust just because of who you are, what device you have, what group you belong to, we, we don't have, want to have any of that. Why has this term received so much attention recently? As you told me, the White House recently put out a press release using the term zero trust. If you think about the evolution of networking and security, everybody was in the office accessing applications sitting in your data center. That was the world. But you look at it today, your applications are everywhere. They're in the data center, they're in private clouds, public clouds, and SaaS applications. And think about us as the users. We are no longer confined to our offices. With the, not, just, just, not just the pandemic, but generally speaking, workforce has been gone hybrid. So users are everywhere, your applications, your data is everywhere, and how do you ensure that all of this is done securely? Not just for me, the user, trying to access a cloud application, or me, an IoT device, trying to access something in the data center, but every single combination of that. And that's really accelerated every single aspect of digital transformation in the industry. And that's why it's so relevant right now. What kind of feedback do your customers tell you regarding the challenges that they face? If you think of zero trust approach, there are really four key principles that we want to apply from a zero trust. First, I need to understand who the user is. Are you really Michael? How do you ensure that the device you're using is the right device? How do you ensure that your access is secure? That when you're accessing an application in the data center, a cloud application, that access is secure. And fourth, the content, the transaction, and these four key blocks I talked about applies to users, applies to applications, as applications talk to each other, applies to infrastructure, if IoT devices or your routers or your switches are talking to different entities. We need to ensure that we do all these four on a continuous basis. And that's how we get a true end-to-end, -end, zero trust enterprise. Give us some context. Where does zero trust fit into the broader scope of security. Zero trust is an architectural approach. It's not a single point product or a solution. It's across everything that you do to protect your users, to protect your applications, and to protect your infrastructure. And let me give you one example for that. So when you're in the office, you get your badge and you enter the office. Do you have different access when you're in the branch or headquarters as you would have when you're at home? And the answer is that in many cases, it's different. When you're at home, you authenticate, you go through proxy, you go through a CASB for SaaS applications, maybe a cloud-based firewall. But when you're in the office, 
I have a notion of an implied trust just because you're in the office. A zero trust approach wants us to remove all notions of implied trust for users, for applications, and for infrastructure. How do you do it? So what are the components of a zero trust environment? Zero trust is an architectural approach. In many cases, it's a journey for our customers. What we need is to ensure that all users, all applications, and all the infrastructure of a given enterprise have a zero trust approach, which means that I need to know who the user is, authenticate them through whatever mechanism I have, password, two-factor authentication, etc. The identity of that device or the identity of the workload. Am I actually who I am? Do I have malware on my device? Because I have bring your own devices in the enterprise as well. I want to make sure that the access that the user, the application, or the infrastructure does is secure. The transaction, which means that the content, I'm inspecting the content. Do I have rights to access that data? Do I have malware in that data? That is done. And all of this is done on a continuous basis, which means that every single digital transaction should be secure. And that's really where we want to get to for the entire enterprise to make sure that the entire enterprise has a zero trust approach to security, has the right security posture as they continue to have a working from home, working from everywhere, applications moving to the cloud, and make sure that all of this is really secure. You said that your customers are taking the zero trust journey. Why do you call it a journey? The journey aspect is more around because the world is hybrid. The users are everywhere. We're no longer just in the office or in the headquarters. We're everywhere. We have IoT devices coming up in the enterprise. Our applications are everywhere. So this journey requires us to ensure that we can transition this, right? It's not going to be one, like everybody in the office or everybody remote. It's not going to be applications only in the data center or only in one cloud. It's everywhere, right? And, and we need to ensure that we are able to help our customers in this transition. For example, if they are moving their applications to the cloud, it will take them time. If they're moving applications in the private data center and some applications in the cloud, they have a hybrid environment. And that's just the reality. So your customers have complex environments and shifting, moving, evolving simply takes time. And so from a zero trust perspective, you have to be able to handle all of it all the time. And different customers also have different requirements for regula regulatory compliance, right? Where data should reside, etc. Two big transitions happening for the industry right now, for our customers right now, is the hybrid workforce and the movement to multiple clouds. Applications and data is everywhere. What it means is that users are everywhere, applications are everywhere, data is everywhere, and they're accessing the applications over a plethora of different networks. A zero trust is required for the entire enterprise for your users, for your applications, and for infrastructure. And you need to do this on a continuous basis. Verify every single digital interaction and transaction. That gets you to a zero trust approach, no notion of implied trust. What are the components of creating a zero trust environment? First of all, zero trust approach requires for many of the organizations also a cultural approach to ensure we remove any notion of implied trust. Because if you look at historically, when you're in the office, you had different privileges to access certain things compared to when you were home. You required more stringent requirements when you're home in terms of how you were able to access applications, or in many cases, you were not allowed to access those applications. But in today's world of hybrid workforce, we want to make sure, like you said, any user, any location through any device, IT managed device or bring my own device, is able to access any application and data securely. But I also want to make sure that I verify every single digital interaction that I have as a user, as an application, as an IoT device, etc. Are there common standards that govern zero trust security? There are best practices, right? So uh, you can get that through professional services from various security organizations like Palo Alto Networks to help customers on this journey. Obviously, you're designing, you're building products relating to this. Can you? Give us a little glimpse behind the scenes as you think about the product design, what features need to be added, included, what your customers care about. How do you make those decisions when it comes to zero trust? The three key tenets of zero trust in terms of zero trust for users, 
zero trust for applications and zero trust for infrastructure. I talked about the four key blocks for each of these which are common, right? So, those are constructs that we have in terms of endpoint security, network security, etc. And then access, how do you ensure that you are having the right ac secure access to the application that you want and that you are authorized to access the application? What can you do with the application? The content, the data that you are accessing or, or sending across. So, all of these aspects apply across users, applications and infrastructure. So, really making sure that the right user with the right identity, having secure access, inspecting the content and doing that on a continuous basis. So, the technology components, the hardware, the software combined with the business process changes create a kind of safety net or a shield. Would that be a correct way to put it? It is a platform approach. So, whether you are using uh, for applications that are in your data center or cloud or SaaS applications, how do you ensure that no matter where you are, you have visibility, you can access the applications if you have the right permissions and what data you can access, what is the, what is the um, rules that can enforce on you to access uh, applications, data, etc. What advice do you have for CIOs that are listening about implementing a zero trust environment for security? My advice to CIOs as they look to their enterprise for a zero trust approach is really to think back and, and see do I have a complete zero trust enterprise architecture across my users, my applications and the entire infrastructure. Okay? And then you, you need to make sure that you think of a platform approach. How do you ensure that you have this done holistically? And then figure out that how do you get there, right? Which, which means that how do you ensure that all users, uh, no matter where they are, I can, I can identify who the users are through whatever mechanism I have in my enterprise. Identity of those users, how do you secure access of the users to applications in the, in the private data center, in the cloud or SaaS applications? How am I continuously verifying the content that I am trying to access for the applications? Does it have malware? Is it the right URL? And is it the right application like you talked about? And how I do I do that on a continuous basis? Same thing for applications. Applications are talking to each other, they are in the cloud, like do I, can I talk about it? Is the right DevOps engine having access to the applications? So on and so forth. Same thing for infrastructure, my IoT devices or my network nodes, etc. So, we want to make sure that all of this are done through a very thoughtful process where we have, like I said, the four key principles, like who the user, can I, uh, can I, can I know who the user is, identity of that, access, secure access, content, and that on a continuous basis is really what gets you to a complete zero trust enterprise which covers all users, all the applications and all the infrastructure that you have in the organization. So, the first step then really is doing an assessment or an analysis of your devices, your users, their locations, the applications. Is that correct? In addition to that, also ensuring how do you ensure that you remove any notion of implied trust as you deploy a single platform solution across it all. Anand, you've really emphasized the notion of the platform approach. So, what are the pitfalls of not adopting a platform approach and doing it piecemeal, you know, here, 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 and we'll get to the rest as we get to it. What happens is that when you have point solutions for different aspects of your security, so a point solution for how I'm going to access applications in the cloud. Then what do you do when, when applications are accessed in the data center? It all it means is that basically you have different rules or sets of policies when you do it. So, you are not consistent and you do not have this notion of, um, of, imp, uh, of implied trust because you are having a different notion if I am accessing a cloud application, a, a different security uh, posture if I am accessing an application in data center or a different uh, a co connotation if I am accessing it from a certain device which may be IT issued versus not. So, we want to make sure that we do not get into this trap of having these point solutions because that is what then you are going to have inconsistencies and that, 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 that may be exploited. So, inconsistencies create potential gaps. Inconsistencies create potential gaps and can create certain short, uh, shortcomings in terms of your entire approach to, to having the right security posture for the entire organization. Anand, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us today. Thank you, Michael. Great talking to you.